The central dogma of molecular biology is the flow of genetic information within a biological system. Part of this flow is DNA replication. DNA replication allows genetic information to be passed on from one generation to the next, or in prokaryotes, from one cell to another in the form of plasmids. In this video, we will be explaining the events in DNA replication, specifically in E. coli. The cord string is used to visualize the double helix DNA of an E. coli plasmid. DNA replication begins with a breakage in nucleotide base pairs at a distinct position of the double helix called the origin of replication. The origin of replication in E. coli consists of 245 base pairs. Among these base pairs are 3 30mers and adjacent to them are 4 9mers. The 3 different 30mers contain 13 subunits each, while the 4 different 9mers contain 9 subunits each. The 13mers have many AT base pairs which have a weaker double hydrogen bond compared to CG base pairs which have triple hydrogen bonds. Now that it's easier to visualize the structures at a molecular level, Let's illustrate the process of DNA replication in E. coli. DNA A proteins bind to the 9 mers of the origin of replication. This results in a tension which causes the DNA helix at the 13 mers to unwind. Primosomes, which are protein complexes, consist of a DNA B helicase which unwinds the DNA helix using energy released through ATP hydrolysis. The DNA B helicase is bound to the template with the help of DNA C. The unwinding of the DNA helix forms a replication bubble, when vertically halved are two replication forks. The replication forks progress along opposite directions, so there is bidirectional replication. The unwound DNA consists of unpaired bases which do not re-anew as they will be bound to single strand binding proteins. As the replication process continues, the parent helix becomes tightly coiled downstream due to the tension created from the advancing replication fork. Type 1 DNA topoisomerase breaks only one polynucleotide backbone, whereas type 2 DNA topoisomerase breaks both polynucleotide backbones. This is known as a DNA gyrase in E. coli. DNA polymerase tree synthesizes the DNA, but only in 5' to 3' direction. So the template has to be read from 3' to 5' by the DNA polymerase tree. But before the DNA can be synthesized, a primase has to produce a primer which is used to initiate the DNA synthesis. The leading strand synthesis advances by nucleotide addition catalyzed by DNA polymerase tree in the 5' to 3' direction. An important component of the DNA polymerase tree is a sliding DNA clamp, which is placed on the DNA under the assistance of slide clamp loaders. So thousands to millions of base pairs may be synthesized without releasing the template. Another feature of the DNA polymerase tree would be that it is able to recognize and replace incorrect bases with correct bases as it possesses 3' to 5' exonuclease activity. The lagging strand synthesis is more complicated than the leading strand synthesis. DNA polymerase tree synthesizes the DNA, but only in 5' to 3' direction. The primase, which is a component of a primosome, synthesizes RNA primers periodically. Nucleotides are added to each primer by the DNA polymerase tree. The sliding clamp then releases the DNA polymerase. This results in precursor fragments known as Okazaki fragments, which consist of approximately 1,000 to 2,000 nucleotides each. RNase-H of the DNA polymerase 1 removes the primers and the DNA polymerase 1 replaces the removed primers with nucleotides. This is known as NIC translation. DNA ligase then seals the gaps by making 3' hydroxyl and 5' monophosphate phosphodiester bonds using energy released from ATP. As a result, a continuous lagging strand is formed. The enzymes are released from the DNA after their interaction is completed with the help of slight clamp loaders as a catalyst. When DNA replication is complete, the process has to be terminated. Termination occurs at a series of sites opposite the origin of replication. These sites are known as ter sites. Terminator proteins bind to these sites, resulting in termination. In order to separate the old circular DNA strand from the new circular DNA strand, 
Type 2 DNA topoisomerase, also known as DNA gyrase in E. coli, breaks both polynucleotides to separate them. 